you know, sometimes you can just tell that a game is gonna bum you out from the opening moment. That's how I felt about Seal, a curious new adventure game starring the incorporeal soul of a dead girl. From the color palette, to the rhyming couplets, to the somber music, I knew this was gonna be a story that would make my heart hurt. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. Named after the Irish word for story, Seal tells the tale of a young spirit who is doomed to spend the rest of her life floating above a world she doesn't remember. You see, all of her memories have disappeared, and everything about this small, tight-knit fishing community seems foreign. That is, until the girl encounters the Raven of the Dead, a bird that promises to take the young girl to the afterlife if she can rediscover her identity and collect the three hidden feathers. This is a simple yet compelling setup for what turns out to be an incredibly moving experience. You guide the spirit through the 2D world by dragging her heart around. The idea is to look for familiar locations and then use your mouse to paint in the missing details. This will usually trigger a memory, which will fill in the details leading up to her untimely death. You'll also find that some of the townspeople have quests you need to complete, such as helping a worried woman bring her husband home safely by lighting the way. What's cool is that her floating spirit will actually morph into something else in order to complete the quests, and some of these effects are genuinely fascinating. You're still doing little more than finding and painting objects, but Seal does a good job of keeping the basic mechanics intriguing. I suppose it helps that the game is only an hour long. By the time you get bored of the mechanics, the game is over and you're on to the next experience. But the length is also the game's biggest weakness. I mean, sure, we learn all the details leading up to the girl's death, but not much about who she was before that. I wanted to know more about who this girl was and the community she lived in. Something that would have given us a strong reason to connect with this lost spirit. The good news is that the speedy storytelling doesn't keep the game from having an emotional punch. When everything unfolds and all is revealed, the revelations are still incredibly powerful. Most of this is conveyed without any kind of conversation, just visual cues and the occasional rhyming couplet. I like the approach, even if I wanted a little more content. One thing I can't fault is the art style, which often looks like you're floating through a world made up of paper cutouts. I love how much they do with the style, and I wouldn't mind seeing other games embrace this look. It works perfectly for this type of fairy tale, and it almost looks like a pop-up book come to life. That said, I do wish there was more area to explore, and it was a bit easier to select which path you wanted to take. Of all the things Seal gets right, it's the music that stands out the most. The game is filled with haunting Irish folk songs that help to add a thick layer of atmosphere to every chapter. It perfectly fits the downbeat mood and is soothing in a way I wasn't expecting. This is definitely one of those cases where the soundtrack is better than the game. Seal is a fun and light experience that doesn't overstay its welcome. Unfortunately, that's part of the problem. The story is over and done too quickly, leaving me wanting to know more about the central cast. For what it's worth, this is a gorgeous fairy tale with simplistic gameplay and a tragic story. I love the art style and need to download the soundtrack immediately. Seal will probably bum you out, but in a good way. Hey, thanks for watching our review. We have a bunch of big games to talk about this year, but we're going to start 2017 off small. Currently working through some of the games I meant to review late last year, all while developers are putting the finishing touches on their 2017 releases. We're also going to be taking a look at Electronic Gaming Monthly's Best and Worst Games of 1989 in just a few days, as well as another episode of Boss Rush. We have a lot of stuff planned for 2017, so I recommend you click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.